Disease-specific mass media public health campaigns have been a significant part of UK public health policy for a number of years, with bowel, lung, breast and blood in the urine campaigns running yearly. The rationale that underpins these campaigns is that they allow the delivery of a focused message to large audiences at a relatively low cost per head, thereby potentially maximising the benefit of every pound spent. Despite this benefit, the evidence that they deliver a significant and sustained change remains mixed. In this study, we examined the effects of one campaign that endeavours to promote the attendance of individuals with primary care who have visible haematuria. This is done in the hope that in so doing, the rates of bladder cancer and renal cell carcinoma diagnosis will increase. A retrospective cohort study design was used, with two specific time periods examined. The first represented a control period prior to the campaign, and the second a period include, that included the months of the campaign and those subsequent to it. This was undertaken in order to assess the effects of the duration of the campaign. All patients referred to Imperial College NHS Trust over the two time periods were examined. The study findings were of interest with no significant increase in cancer diagnosis seen when comparing control to intervention groups. Conversely, a 92% increase in cancer referrals was seen over the same period, representing a significant increase in burden to the secondary care providers. In addition, the duration of effect was seen to be limited with a return to baseline referral numbers seen within six months of the campaign start. For a public health campaign to be effective, it needs to deliver a positive and enduring message, resulting in a change in target health benefit. The campaign in question was in part successful, delivering a significant increase in referrals. However, a corresponding change in cancer diagnosis was not seen and the duration of effect was relatively short at less than six months. These findings bring into question the ability of mass media campaigns, such as the one examined, to improve the early diagnosis of urothelial or renal cell carcinoma. In future, perhaps more targeted messages need to be delivered to healthcare providers, as well as patients, instructing them to inquire about visible haematuria in high-risk groups, in much the same way as they might for chest pain or other overt markers of a disease process. Efforts must also be made to promote the earlier diagnosis of urothelial malignancy, again through the provision of education and information to primary healthcare physicians on the importance of both visible and non-visible haematuria screening in high-risk patient groups. All this must be done with the overarching aim of increasing the diagnosis of renal and urothelial malignancies in the hope that in increasing diagnosis we will decrease mortality from these conditions.